Welcome to the Momentum Lifestyle Project podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Ruse, and here at Momentum, we aim to challenge and champion committed men who are ready to take charge of their lives by mastering their mind, optimizing physical potential, and unlocking their power to find their mission. Whilst our work is predominantly with men, we hope that this podcast will provide value to all who choose to listen. So without further ado, let's jump in. What a podcast we have today in store for you all. I interviewed Danny Kennedy, a good friend and someone that I really look up to. Um, Danny is a fitness trainer, health coach, and podcaster from Melbourne, Australia. And we have an unbelievable chat. We've done two podcasts already together on his podcast, which I will put in the description. As always, if you enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, share and tag us on Instagram at The Momentum Lifestyle. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thank you and enjoy. Daniel Kennedy, how are you, brother? I'm very well. Thank you, Dylan. Appreciate you pronouncing my name, Daniel. Um, do you, do you that's get that been a great start not at all, mate. No, it's actually it's actually not my name. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shoot through the birth certificate a bit later on today if you like. Yeah. So it is Danny. It is Danny Kennedy. One of a kind, so, mate. So one of a kind, exactly. So you've never gotten the old uh, when you're in trouble from mum or the or the missus, you know, a Daniel, or that was never a thing. Nah, it's just not an option, unfortunately, yeah. for them. Um, yeah, they're pretty that's limited that's to what they can really do. It's just like the stern, the stern Danny. You know, it's just the tone of the voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> Be a good thing then, mate. Keeps you, keeps yeah. you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Mate, welcome. This is actually our third podcast together. I was thinking about it. I did one. I've done two on yours, and now uh, you know, momentum started our own here. So, mate, we've. Uh, I love our chat. So I'm looking forward to to get diving right in with this one. Likewise, mate. Yeah, it's been both of our other chats have been really good, really valuable. I've always enjoyed them, um, mm-hmm. and obviously we've got to spend a bit of time communicating over the past 12 weeks or so, which has been awesome. So yeah. uh, I'm sure this one will be, this one will be great. I mean, I love the background there. I mean, I bad. thought when I turned on, I thought maybe you'd um, set up some little zoom background, but it's <laughs> legit. Just, uh, just, <laughs> the old plain wall sat, behind me here. <laughs> sat down in the backyard, mate, got the palm trees. Yeah. <laughs> just, got to, just got back to Hawaii yesterday, actually. So I'm, I'm trying to get as much good weather as I can now that I'm back, but yeah, maybe I need I to know. start setting up a little bit more professionally. I'll get some get some tips off the podcast guru himself. <laughs> yeah, well, as you can see, the old plain background works well. <laughs> Green background, screen, yeah. I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> don't, uh, don't, don't, don't overthink it too much, you reckon. Um, yeah, on that, so obviously you've built up a pretty, pretty recognizable brand now, I would say. Um, you, you know, you and I connected almost two years ago now when I was running events in Melbourne and then... As you said, yeah, you know, we've done a few podcasts and I'll, I'll link those podcasts as well in, in the bio here for the listeners to go across and check out your podcast, which I'm sure they've already listened to and heard of anyway. How, um, how, how I guess, did you start out? Because I think so many people kind of look at the success stories and go, Fuck, look, at, look, at, look at DK, he's doing so well. Like, what's actually the starting formula or what, what did you mainly focus on just starting out your journey in regards to the, the podcast or the whole yeah, the, fitness probably the podcast. podcast, but also, um, yeah. but also just your brand in general, uh, I guess. Yeah. Well, leading into the podcast, like a super quick rundown, I guess for the brand itself. Um, you know, I was always a basketballer and, and football as a junior. And then I moved from Horsham in, in country Victoria to Melbourne, for basketball full-time for two years. Um, and probably pr- prior to that in maybe year 10, I'd started to, um, you know, test out a bit of strength training in the gym and it wasn't something that I'd never really done. I was always naturally a good runner, but yep. just, just had never got into any for at all. And you could tell, um, yep. I, I looked like I was a lot skinnier than those trees in the background there. <laughs> um, and initially I really didn't enjoy the gym that much. And then I just fell in love with it. I started seeing progress, which like, you know, probably similar to a lot of people that are tuned in. Yeah. You see results and it's, it's a pretty good feeling and you get hooked pretty quick. And then I was just pretty quickly become like obsessed. Like I just loved it. Training, yeah. nutrition, 
supplementation, everything. I just, I just, you know, dived real deep into that and, um, and learned as much as I could. And then, you know, looking back at it now, um, it's pretty obvious that even when I was still playing basketball, like my main passion was actually fitness, not so much yeah. basketball. Like I love basketball, but mm. I would always get more excited for the gym than what I would for training and stuff like yeah. that for basketball. Um, built on that knowledge pretty quickly. And then after an injury in 2013, started PT full time. So while I was in year 12, um, I, I had done my PT qualification just on the side, separate to school and um and just in case i ever needed it and you know obviously it turned out to, to work out okay so yeah um 20 2014 it was i started pt and just started yeah. building up my brand and um posting really regular content yeah. got into the online world relatively quickly after helping out a few mates with some training and nutrition plans and stuff like that yeah. and then um what would it have been 2016 i think it was I, I put out my first podcast episode. So I'd actually started listening to about the start of 2016. I think it was, I, I kind of started getting into the world of personal development and, and, um, and I guess so coming a bit more self-aware and um, self and getting into self mastery and stuff like that yeah. through guys like Robin Sharma and even Grant Cardone and things like that. And um and uh, I'd had the idea of a podcast for a while because I've been listening to Gary V, Grant Cardone, and again, like I said, Robin Sharma. And yeah. um, one of them said on an episode one day, you know, like, don't wait till tomorrow to do something that you can do today and mm. stop waiting for the right time and just take action and, and, and learn as you go. Um, so I just did that. I'd had in my notes for a while on my phone, like the name of a podcast, you know, the guests I'd like to get on, how I'd run the show, but I just never pulled the trigger. Yep. So I, after listening to this episode, I literally went onto Google and, and typed in how to start a podcast. And there was this fuck, it's actually, there was actually a really good blog that yeah. gave step-by-step step how to actually start a podcast. So by the end of that day, I'd gone and bought a, a, a mic that I could plug into my, my laptop yep. and recorded a few episodes. I'd, um, you know, made some cover art for the, for the podcast, um, and submitted to iTunes by the end of that day. And then since then, I've put out at least an episode a week ever since then, you know, we're nearly at 300 episodes and um, yeah, so that's how it started. And it was, yeah. I mean, I, you, you would not want to go back and listen to the first probably 20 to 30 episodes are absolutely horrendous. Yeah, but yeah. in saying that, this is, this is what I tell people all the time. Like if I started now, then the yeah. first 20, 30 episodes would still be horrendous. Yeah, because yeah. there's because I I didn't have any experience in doing it. Whereas, um, you know, back then I would literally like have my phone. Yep. If I was doing an episode by myself, or even with a guest, I would have the whole episode pretty much written out in my notes. I'd be sitting yeah. there like trying to make it sound natural, but like reading it out, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it was shit ass. Yeah. Whereas yeah. now, you know, I've been fortunate enough to chat with some really cool people. Mm. You know, like last week I did an episode with um with uh, John Demartini who yeah, I'm sure you're um, sure very, very aware of. And even guys like recently was very lucky to do one with like Andrew Bogut and stuff. And, and now it's to the point where I'm like clicking record and I don't have anything written down. It's like, yeah, I'm yeah. just having a conversation. Um, yeah. I don't, don't think about it all like super relaxed and mm. the, that translate across to the, to the actual interview. And you can tell the feedback I've got is just like, as the episodes have gone on there, yeah. it runs a lot smoother and it sounds like a conversation and, that's what it's been. I've been like so mm. lucky to have conversations with some awesome people to meet some awesome people that I never have had the opportunity to connect with previously. Yeah. And, and also like work towards my, my mission of really helping this as many people as I can. So yeah, as the downloads go up, as new people hear their podcast, now they've got a, you know, a catalog of like nearly 300 episodes to go through and listen to. So I'm sure there's something in there for some, at least someone to take something away from. So yeah, that's how that's how it all come about, and now it's just like I absolutely love it. It's been definitely one of the best decisions I've made for not only for business but just for life in general. Like I said, to to connect with some pretty amazing yeah. people. Yeah, and I guess I mean it's such a common theme, and even with the with the boys that the we chat with here at Momentum, and and the boys that I work with personally in my own business, that fear of that fear of failure or the fear of not having it perfect <clears throat> is so like 
overwhelming at times. I remember when back when I, you know, when I was early 20s, I created a new Instagram account and I was like, okay, I'm going to create my brand. I'm going to create the Dylan Roos brand, you know, the old one. And I went through last year and archived all the posts because I was like, anyone looks at these, like, it's just me boozing <laughs> every weekend and, you know, horrible captions. And so I remember when I started my, <coughs> you know, my new Instagram account and you'd, I put out content for like three, four weeks and then I'd get so self-conscious. I'm like, what am I doing? What are people are talking about me? Rah, rah. And as I said, with the boys that I work with, you know, one boy wanted to start a YouTube channel and, you know, he was so concerned about getting the perfect content and putting out the best content possible. And I think it is Gary V that talks about quantity over quality. And he says, just put it out there because you don't know, you know, let the market determine whether or not it's good content because you might put something out and go, that's shit. And then people might love it. Um, and you might yeah. put something out that you think is amazing and everyone hates it. So how did you get over that initial fear in, in 2016? You would have been five years younger than you are now. So you would have been early, early twenties. How did you get over that? Um, I guess, fear of putting out new content and, you know, becoming the new Danny Kennedy that you are today. Yeah, it's interesting. So like prior to that, when I actually started in the fitness industry, like as a, as a coach, the end of my, I guess you could say basketball career, um, 2013, because I was so heavily into my fitness, I'd actually started a, a fitness dedicated Instagram account. I already had a personal one. Um, and I started a fitness one and I literally for starters, like didn't tell, any of my mates like yeah. i was posting it and i was i was loving it like it was really enjoyable like i was loving the content i was posting i was loving like putting stuff out there and getting feedback mm -hmm. but it wasn't like i didn't tell anyone that i knew because i was I, I was worried about what people would think yeah um and then there was like a turning point where i literally just got to the point where i just couldn't give a fuck anymore i was like mm. i i just don't care anymore like what people think and like i'm only natural like if someone that i'm close with now or even then like had a certain opinion yes it'd still get to me but in terms yeah. of the broader picture like even people that i knew from back home people that i played basketball with like if someone had an issue with it like i just didn't care anymore and yeah. the biggest thing that changed that for me is in in 2014 i did a, a physique competition which at that point in time like none of my friends had ever done it none of my friends even knew i was interested in it and yeah. i did it. i like competed loved the experience it was super nerve wracking. Even mm. that up until like the week of the show, I didn't even tell anyone I was doing it because I was yeah. worried about it. And then after that, it was kind of like, once I did that, I was like, if I can do this, then yeah. fuck, what's a podcast? What's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's an Instagram post? What's a post on Facebook? And the, yeah. I think the, the thing that helped a lot was the feedback. It was so much different than what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't people mm -hmm. going like, what the fuck's this? It was people going like, this is awesome. Like you look yeah. incredible. Um, how can you help me out with my training? Can you help me out with my nutrition? And that, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh, no one even gives a shit. You, yeah, the thing, yeah. you, the thing you got to remember is that like people, people don't wake up in the morning and go like, geez, how fucking weird was that post that Dylan put up yesterday? People wake yeah, up in yeah. the morning going like thinking about their own shit. Then no, no yeah. one actually cares about you that much yeah. as well as what. If you think that people are genuinely spending their day thinking about you, then you're a bit self-absorbed <laughs> but um, I but, all the time. um like people don't actually give a fuck about you like they 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 might for three no. seconds send it to someone and go like at the very worst like oh what what the fuck haha but then they're on to the next thing and the next thing it's like mate they're not sitting around as you said they're not sitting around waking up going what's daddy yeah. posted today what's he up to how's his yeah, podcast yeah. going <laughs> and you, and you gotta think on. as well like if, if if even if there is anyone that's like that like you've just got to you've just got to actually feel like sorry for them and not, not feel yeah. bad about it yourself. Like if someone's that unhappy with their own life that they're mm. spending their time worrying about what you're doing, then that's, that's yeah. something that's, you know, it's unfortunate for them. But so that was the thing that changed heaps for me. And then, yeah. um, you know, with the podcast. So by then when I put the podcast out, that was nothing like, yeah, okay. I don't know what the fear, fear, or maybe it was more so just a commitment thing. I didn't know whether yeah. like how to do it. So it was something that was different. So I was out of my comfort zone, but I got this little soundbite thing that I, I kind of repost on my story and my page a lot that I, from a podcast I did a few years back um, here with someone here in Australia. And, and it was something on the, line, on the, along the lines of, I said in this show that, you know, if you're not doing something because of the fear of failure or rejection, um, yeah. you're literally in the position that you will be in if you do fail already. Yeah. So if yeah. I'm if I'm sitting here and I'm going mm. and I'm going, oh geez, I don't know if I can start this podcast because what if like no one listens to yeah. it? 
what if um, it doesn't go well, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll be in the same position that I'm in already. Mm. So the worst thing's already happened. Like yeah. the worst feeling that you get, the worst yeah. result that you get has already happened. So mm. there's only positives that can come from it. Even if it does fail, you're going to learn something. You're going to meet someone. You're yeah. going to get some experience. Pick but up some sort of skill not, that you didn't have. Yeah. So it's already a reality if you're worried about yeah failing because because yeah. you're in that same position so yeah for me now that's that's something that i try and think about often if there is times where i doubt certain things whatever i'm just like well I'll just fuck just do it and see what happens yeah. and, and if what comes worse doesn't happen and then you move on and do something else yeah that's one of my that's one of my mantras too at the moment is for the past 12 to 24 months has been if i'm scared of doing something that's often what i need to go and do it's like, okay, I, I want to start a podcast, but I'm super nervous and I'm putting it off. And it's been a month since I told people I was starting a podcast. Okay, I need to go and do this fucking podcast. Like that's if that's what I'm that's where our growth lies, right? Is in the uncomfortable experiences of starting a podcast, yeah. starting a brand, starting a business, you know, talking about what you're passionate about. It doesn't have to even have to be, you know, start a podcast, just start having conversations about whatever it is you're passionate about, whether it's health, fitness, mindset, coaching, you know. You chocolate you want to start a chocolate company yeah like to start to start getting the ball rolling in whatever way it look, looks like to you personally um yeah and just stick to your word like say do what you say you're going to do yeah just like i mean in in the, in the health and fitness industry obviously i see a lot of people so many people talk the talk just never walk the walk like if i yeah if i say i'm going to do something i'm going to do it like this is on a, a different type of scale but like I'll, I'll try and like i'll do things that like i'll purposely put myself in uncomfortable positions by saying yeah. i'm going to do something to other people so i have yeah. to commit so have to I, I, know, I had my knee, knee done at the end of 2020 2020 yeah end of 2020 i had my knee done and yeah. just before i got my knee done literally the week before i was on I'm having a few beers with the boys and i've just gone oh next like next week before surgery i'm gonna run a marathon and i hadn't done any training yeah i'd been like doing some short runs like yeah. just going for a run for enjoyment whatever and I was like, shit, I just want to do something that's going to be physically and mentally hard before I end up just sitting around for a couple of months doing nothing. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do a marathon, going to a marathon. And there's like, no way, there's no way you're going to do that. Like, yeah. like you've got to be kidding yourself. So the next, so literally for like three days straight, I just told all my clients, I'm like, oh, I'm doing a marathon next week, doing a marathon yeah. next week, doing a marathon. Yeah. And then it's got up, got up one morning and did a marathon. Yeah. And but, but like, I, I forced, yeah, good. It was yeah. all right. I forced yeah. myself to do it though, because it was like, uh, I, I committed. I, I kept myself yeah. accountable by, by telling other people, and then it looks bad on me if I go out saying I'm going to do something and I don't do it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, and you build momentum. The more you do that, the build build momentum. That's why. Yeah. You know, I'm sure we may touch on it at some point, but that's why I do things like cold showers every morning. Mm. It's because yeah. it's like building up that discipline of doing what I said I was going to do. Like if yeah. I said I'm going to do a cold shower every day, it doesn't matter if yeah. I wake up and it's fucking freezing in Melbourne. I said I'm going to do yeah. it, so I'll do it. Yeah. And it also builds um, self-reliance, but also, you know, you, if you if you do that enough, you start to trust what you say. And so it, it, it almost like becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So like as soon as you say it, you've got a hundred, you know, stories you can tell yourself, well, when I told myself I was going to do something, I'm going to do it. And the, the yeah. downside to that is if you tell yourself you're going to do things and you don't do it, that then becomes the habit too. So you're sitting on the couch yeah. and you're like, all right, one more episode of this show. <laughs> and I'll watch one more and then I'll get stuck into my work. And then that episode ends and you're like, oh, just, just one more and then I'll do my work. And then that becomes yeah. your habit. So every time, you know, you're sitting there watching Netflix or doing whatever you're doing and you tell yourself, oh, oh when I finish this episode, I'll go up and I'll, I'll do the dishes like I said I would. You're telling yourself that and immediately you're going, ah, I know I'm not doing that and I'm going to keep watching more Netflix or keep doing whatever I'm doing because that's the habit and that's the story I've continually told myself. Um, yeah, it works both ways and and like you said, but it's also like it becomes a, a subconscious thing. Like even yeah. Danielle said to me the other day, she's like, oh, you're always just doing doing things that you like don't even want to do or like it's just you can't be bothered yeah. doing or even yesterday we went to the gym in the afternoon we usually train in the mornings and yeah. we had a pretty busy morning so in the afternoon we we're both sitting down pretty wrecked and then i was like oh it's time to train like let's go go yeah. train we both couldn't be fucked <clears throat> well she, she, yeah. she definitely couldn't be and yeah. uh and then we went and trained and then afterwards i was like oh like you feel good like you didn't want to do it before and now you've, yeah. now you've done it like you must yeah. feel good she goes yeah i feel great and then and she goes yeah but you wanted to train and i was like 
nah. Like, yeah. I, that's fucking the last thing I wanted to do. But it's just something now that I've built up where it's not even like, yeah. like if I need to do it, then it needs to be done. Like, you don't yeah. spend 20 minutes sitting here procrastinating, just do it. Yeah. Well, there's something in that too, in terms of when it's not even, it's like not a decision for you. It's, a, it's, you've, you've, you've had yeah. the conversation like, you know, like, on days that you feel good. So when you're, when you're pumped up and you're motivated, you tell yourself, well, I'm yeah. training seven days this week or, you know, this month I'm going to train X amount of days. So you've had the conversation previously when you felt good so that when you feel shit, it's not, it's not like a, you know, I'm sure this is how it happens to you because I know it happens to me. You're not sitting there on the couch going, do I go and train? It's just, it's time to train now. It's time to get up and train. Mm. And, the, and the longer you sit around procrastinating, the, the, the least likely it's going to happen. Yeah. And, and there's, um, I'm going to get this wrong, but you'll get the gist. There's, there's only like, it's, it's something like the brain, once you ask yourself a question and you have two options and it's, let's say, keep going down this path, train or not to train. If you have to ask yourself that question when you don't feel like it, the brain makes a decision within like, with like with, un, with under a second and it's going to choose the path of least resistance. And so yeah. if you give yourself that, like that decision your brain's gonna be like nah stay and you're gonna to have to fight your way into a no let's go train versus yeah. when it becomes a habit it's just i'm training today i'm training today i'm training today there is no other option other than yeah. maybe it's when i'm gonna train you know maybe it's like fuck okay my morning's busy i'm training at 4 p.m now and then that's what yeah, you yeah. have to battle with um yeah but the 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 reason i love habits so well is it becomes subconscious after a while you know, it does yeah. become ingrained into who you are. Um, yeah. And so for, I guess for those listening, do you have any, do you have any tips on, on starting good habits or even breaking bad habits? You know, I think so many people um, get caught up in intensity over consistency when, you know, probably a lot of people need to be focusing on consistency rather than intensity. Yeah. I mean, you've you've done some good work with me on this um, throughout the course and stuff, but this is something that obviously I talked with clients about it a lot. So, you know, my way of explaining it may be a little bit different to how you explain yep. it to, to me, even though I resonated a lot with how you explain it. So for me, it's like, there's a few like really important things. Firstly, it's, you know, let's, let's again, we'll stay on the path of, um, of health and fitness. Like if I yep. talk about a tr like training, for example, right? For a lot of people, it's not something that just comes natural. It's something that they have to, build the habit of doing so i'll work with the client and we'll start off and i'll say all right well when we're figuring out how many days a week you're going to train like tell me what you can do on a shit week yeah. so on a week where you're busy on a week where you've got heaps of shit on what can you like how many days can you do if it's three mm. it's three if it's five it's five it is what it is so if it's safe it's three all right cool so three's our minimum now so you know that on a shit week you can do three so we'll plan for three and yep. we'll allow for say four or five Whereas you look at a lot of people that start out and they're like, oh, I'm, I need to get in shape. So I'm going to start doing seven days a week. Yeah. But <laughs> in their mind, it's like, I know I can only go three times, yeah. but I should be doing seven. So I'll, I'll start, I'm going to do seven. I'm planning to do seven. Within a week, you're, you're failing that, that goal you mm. set for yourself. So that's, that's super hard to stay motivated. It's super hard to build any momentum because you feel like yeah. you're, you're not going anywhere. Whereas if you do yeah. your three sessions and tick them off, that builds momentum. The second thing is that it needs to be like, it needs to be something that you feel good about, like that you're enjoying that, that you, that you actually want to do. Yeah. You can't be, you can't try and build a habit, whether, whether it's something that's like, even if it's a, a chore or a job, that's not that enjoyable, there needs to be something about it that is going to be rewarding for you. That's yeah, going to, yeah. that's going to make you do it or, or some sort form, form of satisfaction by you doing it. <laughs> I think being being consciously aware of the habit as well like i'm a big believer in writing down every morning like what my daily goals are what my habits are that i want to start building so yeah. that i'm not just like you know like the example of new year's resolutions people write them down and then look at them again on january 1st of next year yeah, yeah. and they haven't done any of it because they haven't been consciously aware of what they were like you write mm. them down and that's it that's so it's being consciously aware of that um i think as well with the habits it's um it's also recognizing what like what is and isn't working. So mm. if it is, you're trying to build the habit of training and it's not working over and over and over again. It's not a matter of just going like, I'll keep going, I'll keep trying, I'll keep trying. It's like, why? Why is it not working? Yeah, what are the things yeah. that need to change? What do I need to tweak to make sure it does work? 
mm. and you go from there. Because like we talked about before, like with the decision making, like once you start to see a little bit of momentum, it becomes a shitload easier as the habit yeah. goes on. And you can build on it then. You can start to build on it. When I work with with someone who's done no form of training or no work with their nutrition, it's not like, all right, this week you're doing five yeah. sessions, you're <laughs> yeah. eating these calories, you're having these supplements, you're sleeping this many hours. Yeah, It's like, all right, this week, all, all we're going to do is we're going to try and make sure that you're moving three days. Once we yeah. nail that, the following week, it's all right. So we're moving three days. This week, we're going to tidy up the food a little bit. We're just going to yeah, make a yeah. small tweak to this. We'll start eating a bit more protein. Yeah. Over time, you're gradually adding the building blocks up and up and up till yeah. you've you've expanded out into the point where you've made a huge habit change. Mm. But it's not all in the first week. Everyone tries to go all in. Yeah, I put yeah. up a thing. I mean, it's a bit extreme, but I put up a thing on my story last night about how I just see no no reason why anyone still invests their time and money into these like 30-day fitness challenges where you're trying to eat fucking yeah. next to nothing. You're cutting out everything yeah. you enjoy. You're training way too much. Yeah. You don't enjoy any part of the process. And there's not one single part of your brain that is thinking yeah. once it's 30 days is over, I'm going to keep doing this. You haven't yeah, exactly. changed anything. Like, yeah. Yeah. You have not you have not changed anything. If anything, you've yeah. probably pushed yourself further away from wanting to do it because you hated it yeah. that much. Yeah. So it's just and about most it's people about do starting that. small and building on that. Yeah. And most people do that for the um for the the body composition change or for the health and for the health and well being aspect to it. And there isn't really like apart from losing a little bit of weight so you look good down at the beach, there's no real actually health and there's no long term health benefits because exactly what you said is you get to the end of the 30 days and then you're like, perfect. I've done my 30 day challenge time to go back to what I know, which is unhealthy habits. And so, you know, I think, you know, I I like seeing whenever I do something like that for the mental aspect of it, but I've got the, I've got the base of, I work regardless of if I'm doing a 30 day challenge or not, I'm already working out the same. I'm not really actually, increasing my workout hours i'm maybe adding in the cold showers and meditation a journal and i'm yep. trying to do you know i'm trying to do everything for 30 days and you know see what i can do but apart from that when people do the, like the 30 day you know detox or the tea or the fit tea or whatever you know whatever the latest fat is at the moment you yeah. and vegan and all that they they don't build any habits over the 30 days it becomes a, it becomes a challenge there's nothing rewarding yep. about the challenge except for getting to the end of the challenge rather than enjoying yeah. the process. And I mean, like morning routines are a pretty popular topic at the moment. Well, I have been on a lot of the podcasts I've done recently, even like mm. the ones I've been a guest on. That seems to be a question that's coming up a shitload more now than what it ever has. You know, yeah. What do you do if your morning routine, all that type of stuff. Even that, like you can't just go from do- waking up in the morning, having your toast and your coffee and patting the dog and leaving the house to then all of a sudden waking up tomorrow <laughs> and having this hour morning routine that you just yeah. start to do every day. Like yeah, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Like I, I genuinely do now have a morning routine that lasts 40 to 60 minutes, but yeah, that started with, you know, that started with a three minute meditation every morning that I didn't even yeah. really want to do. That yeah. starts to become a habit that starts to grow then it's then you know we add in something like a cold shower which then also becomes a habit over time yeah then there's the journal writing and now it now it is a habit like i wake up and it's not like like i get out of bed and it's i don't even think about what i'm doing it's like all right yeah i'm doing my meditation after the meditation i'm going to have a cold shower yeah after that i'll go straight to my journal and then it's time to go like but that doesn't just happen all at once yeah. it's just yeah, building yeah. things up over time adding bits and pieces to the point where it's, yeah. it becomes a habit yeah and that's i think that's the biggest point that everyone can take out of it is start small and you touched on it before what it does to your mindset when i set a goal to work out seven days a week and i'm starting on zero and i'm like all right i'm doing seven days a week this week let's say i hit the four to five I don't feel good about hitting the four to five because I've set up, I've told myself, well, I'm hitting seven yeah. and I failed my goal. But to touch back on what you said, if you yeah. get, okay, what can you do in a shit week? I really, I really like that. What can you do in a shit week? Okay. You can do three. Let's hit three. And if you want to hit four or five. So the same person who says I'm hitting three and they get to five, you've worked out the same amount. You feel amazing. Cause you're like, well, I set a goal of three, yeah. but I worked out five this week. Well, I'm on top of the exactly. world versus yeah. the person who set the goal to hit do seven and they only hit five they feel like shit because they feel like they failed 
Mm. Um, yeah. And and that importance of just building slowly mm. so so big. Even but that's you, the thing. You know, like even if you do do three days, it's like you don't finish the week feeling bad. Yeah. It's like oh, I, like I did what I did what I said I was going to do. You know, exactly. it's it's unfortunate. I didn't didn't unfortunately get anything extra this week, but I still yeah. did my three, so I'm on track still. So the next week, you go into the next week still motivated, carrying mm. momentum still, and you continue to move forward. Yeah, and it's similar to you know holiday periods, you know Christmas, New Year's. I, I tell my clients, I'm like, what are, what are your non negotiables for the next two weeks? We're going into a period where everyone everyone drops off for these two weeks. So what are your non negotiables? And let's let's bring it. You know, is it is it you you do some sort of movement, which could include a 20 minute walk, but do you do just some sort of movement every day, and then that's your non negotiable for the next two weeks? Like really simplify it and, and make it easy for yourself because then when you wake up hungover on Christmas day, rather than saying, I told myself I'd go to the gym every day for an hour and kill myself. All you're thinking is, okay, I feel like shit today. I'm just going to wake up and go for a 30 minute walk, grab a coffee, yeah. come back. And you come back feeling good because you've, you've, you've moved, yeah. you're hungover and you've moved. Right. And as we all know, like, or well, everyone that's, that has been active before and, and done this type of stuff, like when you do, feel like you are getting momentum when you do feel like you're ticking off the the things on the list and being productive that leads to you wanting to do more anyway yeah Uh, that's why i think the daily goals and the morning routine for me is so good like i'll leave the house in the morning all i've done literally is you know meditate cold shower and write some things down but i leave here and i'm like i feel productive at so then that makes me want to go and keep being productive doesn't i don't finish my morning routine and go oh fuck yeah i can go back to sleep now (laughs) it's like I want to go out. I want to Let's go out and like this. do shit. I want to keep this going. I want to keep building yeah. on this now. Whereas if yeah. I woke up and didn't do it, I probably yeah. would want to go back to bed. Yeah. And and how has that mindset for you changed over time? <laughs> I guess you, you mentioned 2013, 2014, or maybe maybe it was a little bit later, but 2013, 2014, personal development became a thing for you. And we see that word more so now than ever with social media being able to share so much information and everyone loves a inspirational quote you know myself included i love a little inspirational quote on my story but what is what is personal development to you or what how did you start that journey i I remember being 18 and it wasn't until i was 21 really so up until 21 i i always remember walking in the airport and looking in the bookstores and there was a personal development section and i used to laugh every time like what the fuck i'd pick up books and i'd read the title i'm like i'm like what idiot is reading this like you know i used to think there was something there was something wrong with you to be able to go and pick up a a self i think they were called self-help actually back back then the self-help section of self-help books how did your mindset shifted or how did you get started um in the personal development space and what even is the personal development space yeah, well, I guess there's a couple of different times where it became important. So for me, the first time was when I I got gifted um, one of Robin Sharma's books, The Greatness Guide, and I and I hate reading, but I read his book so quickly. I got and I just remember reading it, just thinking the whole time like areas of my life that I can improve, areas um, that after reading it was inspiring for me to go and like actually take action on some of the stuff I'd read, and I never really felt like that before for me up until that point because of you know, sport and my fitness and stuff. It was, it had always only been about physical, like ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was never anything to do with mental. It was always physical. It was like, how can I get fitter? How can I yeah, get, yeah. how can I get stronger? How can I get better at basketball? How can I get better at footy? It wasn't nothing to do yeah. with mental at all. So the, this, that, that was the first time. And then, you know, yeah. I started to read a few more things and, and started to get pretty inspired and, and started to make some changes and do some work on, on the business, which was fantastic, but it was still yeah. like, wasn't, I'd say it still wasn't a priority and there wasn't actually any real mental aspect of it apart from the fact that I was reading and, and gaining knowledge on something other than just training and nutrition. Yeah. And then it was probably like that I definitely mentally like kind of got to a low point at um, one point in time. And I think it was m- maybe towards the end of 2016 and I started meditating. I just did a meditation one day because mm. I just felt honestly, mentally just felt horrible. Did this yep. meditation and, I, and it was like a 10 minute, guided meditation um and after i just remember feeling awesome like so much better than what i did before the meditation and then i did it on and off for a while didn't really make it a habit and then it got to the start of 2017 and i was like all right i'm going to make this a goal that this year i'm going to meditate every single day 
Yeah. So I did it. I meditated every single day, 2017. But I still like that's when I started to buy in um, mm. to the to the personal development side of things, I guess. But it was also like coming to the realization with the meditation because if you met me even now, like you probably would, unless you've heard some of my content, I'm definitely not someone that would seem like that would meditate. Like I'm always doing shit. I can't really sit down for that long. Like I, yeah, yeah. But it was coming to the realization that you don't have to be like some hippie. You don't have to be like, yeah, yeah. there'd have to be something wrong with you. You don't yeah. need to like, you actually, something something that i wish i had done earlier was meditate because because i was mentally not feeling that good i wouldn't say it was like rock it definitely wasn't rock bottom but i mean like it's you i think it's important to realize that you don't need to like have some monumental fuck up in your life to start meditating yeah yeah yeah. have some like rock bottom to all of a sudden start wanting to become a better person and and develop your own self-awareness and and become the best version of yourself now for me Mm. it's like that's why i do put out a bit of content around this and even in my online coaching and stuff i I come promoting meditation and journaling and gratitude Mm. lists because it's just about becoming the best version of yourself it's like yeah every day now it's like how what are some areas that i can become a better person um Mm. not not even just for the not even for those people around me or to have an impact on those around me it's also like for myself like i want to be able to wake up and go to sleep knowing that I I was a good person that day or I I felt like I improved as a person and, um, and I'm getting the most out of my own life, not just going through on autopilot, which I think is so many people are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's always, there's always, there's always so many areas that you can improve on. Like I do all this shit. I do all the meditation and the mindfulness and the gratitude and all that stuff. But there's still days where I get to the end of it. I'm like, you're a fucking head case. Like (laughs) this is like today, today's been, today's been shocking. Like you, you you, you reacted to this or, um, yeah. you spent 20 minutes complaining about something that you can't change, whatever, like it mm. still happens. But yeah. the difference is I can pick up on it. Now I get to the end of the day and I'll do like a reflection on the day to be like, yeah, you spent an hour in a mm. shit mood because of something small that happened. Like yeah. let's, what, what can we do tomorrow? Or what can we write down in the diary tomorrow to make sure that you're at least aware of that happening. And then yeah, next yeah. time it does come about like what well, we can get on top of it a lot quicker instead of yeah. letting it just roll in from one day to the next to the next so yeah yeah that, those are like the first two times i guess that that changed it and then since then it's just uh it's just been about continuing to grow on that and finding what works yeah. for me and um and yeah just it's just a never it's never in about it. it's like your health and fitness if you mm. stop doing it you'll you'll it'll go backwards so it's like yeah. for me it's just about taking my uh, my mental health as importantly, if not more importantly than my physical health um, yeah. on a day-to-day basis and, and training my brain and like uh, my own habits like I would with my fucking biceps. Yeah, yeah. Which And you've got some pretty good-looking biceps too, mate, my, may I add. So, <laughs> yeah. so but it's, a, it's a good point you bring up around um, meditation. I've never spoken to, and my mum's been meditating for 20, how old am I, 20. 25 years or so i've been meditating for most of my life um as a result of that i haven't spoken to a single person that said that they've meditated you know consistently and gotten nothing out of it you you get you know just like in health and fitness you get those that work out for a week and they might say something like oh it's not for me or i hate the gym or it's like well you 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 worked out for a week you you meditated for a week you actually don't have an authority to say whether or not it was good for you but every time someone's stuck with it um, no matter who it is, they've said, I, I'm a better person when I meditate. Like whether they run a business and they're more calm and centered to handle their employees when they come in the door versus reactive, swearing, yeah. you know, and, and yelling. The meditation piece for me is, is, a non, is my non-negotiable and has been for probably the last, as I said, I've been meditating my whole life, but I've made it such a habit in the last 12 months where now it is every day I wake up, it's unconscious. And I literally, it doesn't matter what time it is. I'm a zombie. I'll walk straight to my couch. I'll, I'll wash my face, walk straight to the couch, sit down, pump out a 10 minute meditation. And it's, it's been, you know, huge for me in maintaining some form of, um, yeah, calmness and, and lacking that reactivity and more being able to respond. But you, you hit the nail on the head. In it terms is, of it's just, the same as, same as training, like you know, yeah. just saying there's no such thing as a bad workout. There's, yeah. there's never been a time where, even on the days where I meditate and I seriously feel like I've 
got fuck all out of it because I just couldn't yeah, yeah. couldn't get in the zone or whatever. I don't finish and go, oh, fuck, I wish I didn't sit down and do that. Yeah. It's like, the, even if it doesn't feel like you got something out of it, like you, mm-hmm. you finish your meditation in a better place than what you were before you started, even exactly. on the days where it doesn't feel like you've got anything out of it. So yep. now it's it, like you said, for me, it is a habit too. So it, like I'd wake up and look forward to it. I'm like, yeah, thinking about how good I'm going to feel afterwards. Like I do yep. when I go train, like it's, yep. it's now it's like very similar. It's mm, like my yeah. mental form of going to the gym. Yeah, exactly. Right. And every, I mean, I, yeah, I'm a massive advocate for it. And Genoa obviously is a meditation teacher and we, you know, every, every group call that we jump on in mentorship, you know, we started off with a quick five, 10 minute body scan, which, just gets everyone out of their heads and into their body and we you know we think it's incredibly important um so yeah, yeah mate i want to switch gears really quickly whilst i've got you uh we've got you know 15 minutes or so left mate it's something that really um struck me and really uh inspired me over the last 12 months was your resilience through the pandemic um obviously we in the, obviously the last three months we've been chatting you know every week um, but even before that, you know, just seeing the stuff that you put out on social media and your content, um, you, you, you just kept going. And obviously you, so you're in Melbourne, you, you, Melbourne had the toughest lockdowns for those that don't know, you know, stage four for these, what was it? I think for almost two, two or three months, you had stage four. So how, Yeah. what are the, what, what kept you going? What, what tools, like, how are you so resilient? I guess is the question. What? What allowed you to maintain a good attitude throughout the pandemic? A lot of people, I was working in in a cafe at the time and it was heavy. Like the energy in Melbourne was really heavy. Everyone was a bit down. Everyone was really down, to be honest. And, you know, some people were able to maintain resilience like you did and other people really crumbled and really struggled. How did you maintain the resilience? I think it it comes from like doing the exact opposite when I was younger, like I would get an injury when I was playing football or basketball and I'd miss one training session. It'd be the end of the world. Or like I, when I had my ankle reconstruction, I was like borderline depressed for a couple of months because I couldn't do what I love to do. And yep. I fixated on that. I didn't think about the fact that I could be spending more time with mum and dad. I didn't think about the fact that I could be, you know, working on something else until the, until the moment that I did, start thinking about that until I think it was literally, that must've been the time I reckon when I did, maybe that was when I read um, the Robin Sharma book and that's when it kind of changed my mindset changed. But I did used to spend a lot of time just in like, just kind of bathing in the negativity and, and, Mm. um, and letting it affect my my whole life. Like not just, it just affected everything. And now because I'm so aware of that, I see that all the time and, Mm. and it's like, it's, it is depressing and it, and, working with people as a personal trainer, you, you feed off other people's energy. So I know I could be in the best mood and a client will come in and whinge and complain for an hour. And by the end of it, I, I feel negative. I feel like shit. Yeah. So yeah. it's for me. And, you know, so I think it might've been a, a podcast I listened to with Tony Robbins a, a few years back. And he just mentioned, you know, like focus only on what you can control. Mm. Anything that you can't control outside of that is a waste of your time and your energy. Yeah. And, and you're, nothing good is going to come from focusing on what you can't control. So for me, it was like, all right, this is super shit. Like the first week and, you know, the start of lockdown for me, I just had a shoulder Rico. So I'd had, I couldn't, you know, I don't go longer than buddy eight hours without doing some form of exercise. So yeah. I got told I couldn't train at all for eight weeks. Yeah. Um, we went into lockdown. So I lost pretty much all of my PT clients. My online subscriptions went down. Um, was spending not much time with Danielle because she was working flat out to try and make keep the cafe going because they were in yeah, a pretty, yeah. obviously, hard spot as well. So I was sitting at home and I, I just found myself like for a week or whatever, just like being super negative and, and just mm. letting it get to me. And I just made a decision. I was like, look, do what you but he constantly tell other people to do. Like focus only on what you can yeah, control. Yeah. You, yeah. Need, need, you need to be able to adapt as quickly as possible whenever you need to and that literally just became like that, that instant decision was just like that was it for the whole year so as you said we went through all this bullshit like we went the restrictions were pretty heavy and then they would cut them back and then it would be like it had been like a week of like freedom and then we went into the heaviest restrictions we've been in the whole time like a week later yeah, yeah, yeah. so i'm i'm sitting at home like watching people's social medias 
everyone whinging about the decisions that have been made by, you know, like whether it's yeah. the government or whether they're complaining about, and people rightfully so were disappointed and upset about yeah. what was going on with their work or their business or whatever. Mm. But it just didn't stop. It was like fucking every time you look at um, Instagram, every time you look at the news, there's nothing positive. Every yeah. time you go to a cafe and you'd, you'd get your takeaway coffee, you stand out the front and 99% of the people at the front are fucking complaining about something. Yeah. Yep. You're sitting there and and I put up a post one day saying like it's it's actually easy to just go along with what everyone's doing. It's mm. easy to be a sheep. It's easy to to buy <laughs> into the negativity. It's easy to sit there and wake up each morning and check the coronavirus updates and all this type yeah, of shit yeah. and just get stuck in it. But it's, it's going to do nothing for you. Yeah. So I just made the decision. I was like, look, you got to have to adapt whenever you need to adapt. And literally, I was having to adapt over and over again. There was a point in time where mm. I couldn't even PT outdoors. Like, yeah, I mean, most, most years I'd try and leave Melbourne in winter, let yeah, alone yeah, yeah. train people outside in the fucking cold from six yeah, to yeah. six every day. So it was just adapting. It was like being yeah. grateful. Like the gratitude was massive for me as well. Like, yes, I can't yeah. go to the gym, but fuck, uh, I get to spend time with Danielle or I get to yeah. build out a new course online. Um, and I also just like looked at examples of people that were being positive you know, like I'd think of someone who is just super positive and how much energy you feed from them. Like I said, yeah. you, you definitely feed, you feed from other people's energy. So I remember one day I went to Danielle's cafe and a friend of ours, he's just like fucking, he's awesome, but he's just always like up and about. Like she's yeah. always constantly over the top positive. But I just saw him one day at the cafe and and then I was just like fucking hell. Like I, was, I saw him for like two minutes and I left there yeah. feeling so good like yeah, we yeah. have that decision every single day to be that positivity and yes it's, yeah. it's more difficult than than choosing to go along with everyone else but mm. you see the impact that it has by having a conversation with someone who's always negative and they come and talk yeah. to you and instead of talking about anything to do with not being able to work or losing money or not being able to go and go to the gym and go drinking or whatever it is like yeah yeah, yeah. just talk about something good talk about something yeah. that's that, that inspires you it's positive yeah and it just makes such a difference so that's that's mm. what i chose to do is really focus on what i could control yeah start doing other things and, and adapting like the biggest thing like the biggest word for me for 2020 was adapt like adapt, the yeah. sooner you can adapt the sooner yeah. you can adapt to any situation the better it's going to be and yes that like i said there are a lot of people that were worse off than me mm. there's definitely going to be times where something shit happens and you've got every right to be disappointed for a little bit but yeah have a little moment of of being disappointed and upset yeah and then and then adapt and move on otherwise yeah, like yeah. the only person the only person suffering is you and, you, and it yeah, literally yeah. is your fault like yeah because you're you're the one choosing to to stay in that negativity so the sooner you can get out of it the sooner you're going to benefit something that's so important <laughs> there is um is that you have every right to be disappointed you have every right to be angry and you have every right to complain but does that help? Like it's not actually fixing your situation. It's not actually providing you with a solution. And whilst like, you know, I talk about like, you know, we talk about it all the time, momentum, life is shit. Like life, like things happen. Like you, you could drop dead at any second. Someone close to you could get cancer. You know, these things happen and are very real in the world. But what does ruminating on those things do? What does sitting around for months on end complaining about lockdown actually do you have every right like hey man it does suck and i feel yeah. for you but like what's yeah. it gonna do for you if you just spend three to six to we're now 12 months into a pandemic if you thought that oh, i'll just mm. ride out the pandemic and get to the end of it and then i'll sort my shit out you're now 12 <laughs> months you've just wasted 12 months of your life doing nothing and there's no it's no one's fault but your own and i think it's so great to have you talking about it in particular because <laughs> Mate, PTs were fucked over in the last 12 months hard. And you're still here oh, yeah. going, like, you're still here going, well, I had, like, it was adapt or die. And, you know, I don't say but that. That's lightly. the thing. There was a, yeah, there's a point in time where the, like, you, you know, throughout the whole pandemic, you could go to a bottle shop and buy alcohol, but you weren't allowed to train with a friend in a park. Yeah. You weren't allowed to, you weren't, like, I wasn't allowed to go into the gym, which, even though people would think the gym may be like a, a dirty place, like throughout COVID, it was the cleanest place you could be. Like you'd be on a bench press and Zero cases. halfway through, guys there fucking wiping the bench while you're still going. You're like, what's <laughs> going on? But like, but like, use the example of cafes. 
yeah like those that adapted those that adapted have actually come out so much better off so like yeah you know all of a sudden they've realized that they can be adding home packages to their to yeah. their cafe they can be adding uber eats they may not have ever used uber eats before they've now yeah. but it's also but it's also like they were there you know cafes i'll use the example of cafes like if you stayed open and and just adapted and did what was necessary mm. like you've now got like all these people that throughout the whole year the best part of the day was coming to you to go with takeaway coffee they may not have yeah. even come to your cafe ever before now all of a sudden it's their favorite place to go because exactly you were there right. when they met the most um yeah. so i think there's only positives that can come from it when you eventually go back to normal whereas those that yeah. sat there and just hoped for the best and waited yeah. they're no better off than what they were beforehand yeah exactly right and and mate so what is next for dk what is next for dk fitness obviously you've got the fitness and lifestyle podcast uh a little birdie has told me you've got a pretty exciting project going on at the moment mate with your new company tell us mate tell, tell, tell us about it yeah thanks mate um look with the fit with with the business side of stuff it's like I just want to keep like my whole goal and mission is to just help as many people as I can mm. and make an impact. So, you know, the podcast, the social media, email list, all that type of stuff, like that's stuff that I genuinely enjoy doing. And I, and I, the whole purpose is to add some value to people and, and like as a business side of things, like I would love to eventually open up my own facility so I can see more of that in person. Like I, I'm lucky mm. enough to work with people on a day to day basis, but it'd be super cool to have somewhere where people can come and, and, um, and I can see them make a change in their life with in terms of having a gym. So definitely that's on the cards at some point. Um, but the, you know, starting a new, something completely new uh, very soon with my partner, Danielle, we're launching a, a new active wear, active wear brand called Unify. Um, so it's about Y O U N I F Y. Um, and the whole, you know, the whole concept spell that again that for is me. bringing, spell that, spell that again for me, brother. Y O U N I F Y. Yep. Perfect. I'm a little bit slow, so, mate. So, you better do these things slowly uh, for me, you know? <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you afterwards email so you can read it over it. Um, <laughs> but, um, you, know, the, you know, the whole meaning around the actual word unify when it's spelled properly is, yeah. uh, you know, is bringing people together and, and, you know, joining kind of like as one. So that's a, it's a concept, again, like this is something that we came up with throughout COVID. Um, we were just thinking about some, some things that we could do to keep ourselves interested try something new and, and maybe add a different um avenue i guess to to what we were doing and danielle um you know loves her activewear loves a lot, bit of online shopping and gets um some comments on a, on a gym kit every now and then so we thought you know why not yeah. start a new venture and and um and see how we go so at the moment it's all it's all female stuff um we're, we've got our first launch like i said in march um yeah. it's been you know that was one of the things that i adapted to throughout COVID is um, is learning the learning starting to learn the world of e-commerce which is something I'd never done before so yeah I started spending a fair bit of time just learning about bits and pieces um, that mm. we'd never done and it's been a very lengthy process we started literally like a month or two into lockdown in 2020 and we're now only about to to launch so it's been a cool process but again hopefully we can just um it's just about adding value it's about you know people people buying the active wear and, and feeling good about themselves and, and wearing it on their day-to-day -day life and and yeah. maybe inspiring motivating them to go to the gym and their new kid or whatever it is yeah, but yeah, yeah so that's um that's something that's going to be pretty exciting and, and something new which would be good to continually learn and just add add a different pillar to the to the business and just learn new stuff mate unreal that's uh awesome to hear mate and awesome to see i know you had a few hiccups along the way so but I'll be definitely looking out for Unify. I love that. Great name. Definitely um, sums up, you know, one of your big purposes and missions in life, um, bringing people together through, through obviously the fitness and, and wellness field. Um, and, mate, if you ever need any leg models, just ship me a pair of tights and I'll just take a few, you know, quick little picks in the, in the leggings and, and get them out going, mate. I've got a, you know, I'm happy to help you out there. <laughs> yeah. How not to wear your leggings? <laughs> not to wear leggings. <laughs> um, DK, mate, awesome to chat as always. As I said at the start, this is our third third podcast together. I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm sure it's not too far down the track. Um, I'll put all, all the details to get in touch with DK. So, you know, you, you offer online training. Face-to-face uh, -face stuff is back. I do believe in, in Melbourne. I'm in, I'm in Hawaii, but face-to-face -face stuff's back. So I'll put your website in there. You can, you can follow... Um, 
you can follow Danny at DK Fitness. Is that correct? On Instagram? Yep. DJK Fitness. Sorry. Um, on Instagram. And I'll put all of your links and stuff in the um, bio, mate. And hopefully, you know, when this goes to market, we can get some of your new kit. All the girls listening in can get some new Unify kit. Cheers, mate. No, thanks. Thanks again for having me. Great conversation as always. And um, yeah, very much appreciate it. Hopefully people have taken away some value. Awesome, mate. Have a good day.